Hi, something I've been wanting to do for a while is to share with you the process that I go through when I'm uh, bouncing uh, out of Ableton or my DAW into cassette to get a bit of a thicker, richer, deeper sound when I'm using sometimes the digital plugins um, like the synthesizers, I want something a little bit more gritty. So a cassette is a really great way of achieving that. But as you'll see, there can be quite a lot of problems with actually the time alignment of uh, a cassette and having recorded something out of the computer to cassette and back in again there can be quite a lot of drift in between the two so i'm going to show you a couple of different ways firstly in ableton achievable just with ableton alone and the second one using a plugin from sound radix uh, in pro tools so let's check it out okay so i've been working on this track um, and it has a synth sound that sounds something like this which is really nice, um, but it's a digital synth um, and I'd quite like to dirty it up a bit more and get something a bit more dynamic and interesting going on with it. Um, another subtle layer, basically. So this is a prime, if, as far as I'm concerned, a prime candidate for going, getting crunched onto tape. So um, in order to uh, be able to realign this, once I've um, recorded it to tape and back into the into Ableton again. Um, I'm, I've put in some woodblock sounds at the, at the start. Just a little clave sound, um, which you'll hear here. Hopefully you can hear that. Oh no. So I've just put in a little clave sound, like so. Uh, one at the start and one at the end. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll send both of those channels uh, I will send to my ADAT output, which goes to the tape machine. We're going to hear though those come back in uh, from the tape machine um, into this live input channel, which I'll also solo. So now we're listening to the return from the tape machine. So this is probably a good time to go over to that. Um, and show you that. So the, this is it, this is the recently serviced uh, Tascam MIDI Studio 644. I've just put a new belt in here um, and so it sh it's running quite smoothly. I cleaned up as much as I could internally but it still has its, its vari variation in terms of its speed. I'm running it on a high speed, uh, at a fixed speed, apparently fixed, but we'll see about that. Um, what I've got here is I've, I've uh, basically got tracks one and two armed. Um, if I play the track again, you can see, you can see there the level coming in to this group, which is what's gonna be recorded to tape. So I've zeroed the uh, the counter here. So I'm basically just going to hit record and then I'm going to play from the click onwards. Okay, so we got our final click. It went a bit glitchy there at the end, which is interesting, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, that might be even more interesting. Uh, so let's see. So I'm rewinding the tape back to the zero position. Um, this time I'm going to uh, switch back and show you my desktop again. Okay, so I'm going to bring that back in to Ableton. I'm just gonna hit record. Here we go, should hear the click. And then the audio.
So some interesting buffering bits going on there, probably because my computer is trying to record uh, audio and uh, record the video for OBS as well for this tutorial video. So my computer's struggling a little bit, but you can see there that we've got the tape um, recording come back in. So that's back into Ableton. Um, the next thing to do would be to, um, I, I, uh, if, if we were gonna try to do this in Ableton, my next step would be to align that first click. So put, first of all, take it off of warp and align that first click to that bar there, um, to that to that beginning of that bar where the where the clave happened, um, and that will give give us a good starting point. Um, so so we can listen to both together. I'll just reroute these back to the master again. Okay. And then we can listen with and without the tape. So you you can hear how that's adding a certain fullness and a certain um, body to the sound, which is potentially really, really exciting, really cool. Now, this is the issue. So if we zoom in at the start, we've got a nicely aligned clave there. If we zoom in at the end, you can see that because the tape speed has drifted, um, this one is now no longer in line with this one. Um, so uh, we, can, we can fix that, of course, we can fix that in Ableton. Um, I can probably zoom in right at the start and what I'd be likely to do is to try to find um, and it's difficult because the this waveform is obviously uh, heavily compressed because it's been to tape and back. Um, but what I would try to do is find some similar um, positions, similar um, uh, uh, parts of the waveform which I could use to align here um, and try to try to match them up. It's not easy with this one. Um, but yeah, what we'd be trying to do is get these as, as sort of similar in terms of their phase phase coherency as possible. We're going to probably accept with, for a sound like this that it's not going to be bang on, and it's more about timing than phase alignment, really. Um, but let me just try and show you. If I put on to, put this onto warp and keep the clip's current timing, and I zoom in at the end here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to move this last clave put it on the bar there. And um, what that's done, of course, is it's aligned the claves, but it's also aligned the track. So it's aligned the, uh, the synth, the, the synth and the tape together. So they should play together now. So that's one way that we can do this um, in Ableton um, by using this click technique and putting these clicks in. But um, there is another way which I've found out which is which is really, really cool and I'm going to show you that uh, now. So the, the next, the, the way to achieve that, it's, unfortunately there's um, this plugin that, that I will use uh, is called um, uh, Auto Align uh, Post and it's made by Sound Radix. Unfortunately, there's not currently a version for Ableton, so I'm gonna have to jump across to Pro Tools, which I'm gonna do now. Before I can do that, I have to just make it do a little bit of preparation. So um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna unwarp this, um, but I'm gonna trim this so that these start at the same time. And I'm going to make a, um, uh, a consolidated version. I'm gonna freeze this track and I'm going to make a consolidated version of that synth, which I can then put into Pro Tools and process with Sound Radix um, Auto Align Post, uh, and then try to align these two together in that way, which is quite exciting. Okay, so that's frozen, that track, and now I'm going to flatten it to give me an audio file, um, which I'm going to then consolidate. Um, and this, this tape I'm going to also consolidate. So I'm going to try and make them roughly the same length. Um, 
so that when I put them into Pro Tools, they look similar. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick consolidate on both of these. So consolidate the frozen file and consolidate the, the tape as well. Remember, this tape is not warped now, so this is still out of time effectively with the, um, with the, the frozen uh, synth synthesizer sound. Um, so now it's a good time to switch over to Pro Tools. Okay, so I'm going to create a new Pro Tools session called Oberhausen Align. It's AIF, 48 kilohertz, okay. And I'm just gonna save that in this uh, better than dope folder. Um, I'm gonna then go to import uh, some audio uh, and I'm gonna, I found these two files in the consolidated folder within the Ableton project. Um, so I've just renamed them so that it's easy to see which is which. And I'm gonna import those now. Uh, so put them onto some new tracks. So what do I want to do here? Well, I want to align the tape to the synth. So I'm going to, first of all, select this tape uh, channel um, and this, this tape audio here. Um, and I'm gonna to go to the uh, audio align post or auto align post um, plugin. Uh, and this is gonna be applied to the session, to this channel here, to this audio here. The, the way to get this to work is that you pick then uh, into the sidechain input, you pick what you want it to reference. Um, and then you can uh, select either a dynamic or a static mode. Now we want dynamic because of the way that the tape machine is gonna move and change over the course of that couple of minutes. The motor isn't stable, it doesn't have any sync reference as we talked about earlier. So uh, I, I need to um, use dynamic mode here and I'm going to preview it. It's analyzing the two and it's trying to sit them on top of each other. Um, and then I'm going to uh, uh, render it. It's going to then render a new version of the tape, um, which will then appear in my uh, Pro Tools session. Um, so I'm going to have a look here into the Align folder and in the Audio Files folder, uh, there is now a uh, evil tape uh, aligned uh, pair, left right pair of uh, <coughs> which have been now aligned for me dynamically. So really, really, uh, really cool. So these should be perfectly aligned now. Um, I'm just gonna turn the volume down. So they're perfectly aligned now. Winner, what a great plugin. <clears throat> so here's another little uh, example. Um, and this is just with some, some random audio. So um, I'm gonna go to uh, here and I've got some two pieces of audio here uh, from a recording. But yeah, if you're stood at the back, feel free to come in, there are bean bags. So there's, this is, imagine that there's a, uh, a track here, which is the um, a fixed microphone, and this is a second microphone, which is moving around. Um, so they, they may stay, start off close together. Um, if, if you're leaving us now, please do take your rubbish with you. And the speaker speaker next to as, you as someone walks further away, they start to drift apart. So this is really where, of course, this is where this software is uh, is aimed at um, post-production really but for us it's great as well um, if you have Pro Tools so I'm just going to try the same thing again I'm going to um, apply uh, the uh, the process to the second track and uh, use the first track as the sidechain input preview that um, and you see how that it, it lines the two up the pink and the blue and then render um, and then I'm going to have another listen. Dusting and recycling, it just helps us keep the tent. A little gift from the speaker, so I'll let you all that, but that's fine. You're, you're so there you go. 
absolutely locked in and locked on. Well, I hope that was really useful for you. Um, big up to Sound Radix and, uh, and, and, and all the work that they're doing, because that is really incredible, the way that that works. Um, and as always, in any questions or comments, stick them in uh, the, the, the comments below and check the description field for more information about Brooks Audio and what we're up to. Big up, see you next time. Peace.